Hi, everyone. I'm Shiron Ling from Taiwan. And um, Taiwan is a very young democracy from only, I guess, 11 hours in the future. But we have been prototyping democracy for the past 30 years. Thank you. <laughs> um, we've been prototyping democracy since 1987, since the lift of martial law over there. Uh, and since then, the democracy and public participation in Taiwan has been developed in several formats, from face-to-face -to, -face to, to uh, deliberate over the internet. Um, and then, the today's Taiwan democracy is more or less like, like this picture showing up there, this picture. So today, this is how our democracy looks like. These people you see in the photo here are citizens in Taiwan participating in a civic tech hackathon that uh, is organized by more than 4,000 volunteers every other month, and then we call ourselves GovZero. And it's re uh, writing in G0V. Uh, in GovZero, we share this notion to be nobody, uh, which was just introduced. Uh, it's thinking about instead of asking why nobody's doing this or that, we should be that nobody and start doing something already. So in a nutshell, we actually prototype and make better version of the, how we think the society should be using um, emerging or existing technologies. And through that, we just kind of um, prototype the future democracy, uh, use a lot of fun experiments. And one of the experiments I'm going to proudly present to you is to fork the government. I'm not sure how many people actually haven't heard of the idea of forking the government. Can you raise your hand? If you're raising your hand, uh, if I could invite you all to read it out for me. Three, two, one. Fork the government. OK, great. I really enjoy this project because not only just because it's a fun experiment that is interesting to really many times, um, but it's actually very efficient. Um, what we did in the Taiwanese government uh, was kind of inspired by the GovZero community. And in GovZero community, uh, when we were there just kind of doing all the hacking, uh, making all the ideas uh, with the civic hackers, uh, all we did was looking at all, all the websites. I'm going to do it very slowly. All the websites that we didn't like, uh, that ends in g0v.tw. And then we make another version. We make another copy, and then we make it uh, more open data inside. We make it more uh, better user experience. And then um, we kind of just change the URL from gov to g0v. So that uh, the magic happens. It solves this discoverability issue. When citizens, if we uh, find ourselves end up looking at, at a government website, that we probably didn't quite like. We, uh, what we need to do is simply you know, go on the URL, change the O to zero. And then you'll find out yourself landing in a shadow government with open data and better UX and everything like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. Let me know if I talk too fast. I'll speak slowly. Uh, so one of the example that, oh, animation. Uh, that we, uh, just as a symbol for this idea of forking the government, is to uh, fork the budget website from the government. So you know, usually the government budget website is like uh, a lot of pages, uh, very wordy, a lot of tables, and you can find PDF links inside. Uh, and then you probably have to open the PDF files and find all the numbers and try to make sense of it. So the GovZero nobodies, we managed to uh, scrap the website and make it open data. And by the way, make it more interactive so that it's more digestible. And then the good thing happens afterwards is the government actually merged it back. So actually the Taiwan, uh, the Taipei city government, sorry, uh, end up merging it back. So if you type uh, budget.taipei right now, you can see the new visualization over there. Uh, another fun experiment that also took place uh, some years ago, around since since 2014, uh, is another experiment about uh, prototyping uh, an open consultation process for digital regulatory reform. So since 2014, um, that was the year uh, or the era of self-media, right? 
Well, that time people are, you know, like digital natives we are not hesitated to become YouTubers or Instagram influencers, and the Sunflower Movement took place. Sunflower Movement in Taiwan uh, took place in 2014 March. Uh, was a movement led by students in Taiwan who couldn't bear with the MP some willingness to deliberate about a surface trade deal with the Beijing office. So that the students they occupy the parliament for 22 days and conducted real deliberation over there. Um, so what does it has to do with Gov Zero people? They, they also went into the parliament, they also joined forces and brought in some live stream cables and devices and start live streaming inside, putting all the activi activities online broadcasting. So then the activities in the parliament, uh, when people conducting real deliberation, could be live streamed and the entire process could be open for the world to see. So it could be truly reported as how it was, as in non-violent and peaceful. It is nothing more than open space technology, where nothing's planned, there's open agenda, people are just hanging out on the street talking about how we can better our society. In that moment of time, no matter people on the street, people occupying the parliament, or probably people who are supposed to be in the parliament but then end up couldn't make it, we all share the same need that we want to have a platform that can enable us to talk and generate rational discussion, generate uh, a solution that suits for the nation. So the lady in the picture over here, she is the former cyberspace minister, Jacqueline Tsai. She um, condensed the idea onto a post-it and then she attended the next GovZero hackathon that's organized every other month. And then she proposed this post-it um, and asked, can we do something? The nobodies in GovZero community took the challenge and built a platform called V Taiwan or Virtual Taiwan. And funny enough, one of the nobodies, I'm gonna just say her name, Audrey Tan, she was uh, one of the group that collaborate and work on V Taiwan and now she's the digital minister of Taiwan, who I work with right now. So, V Taiwan, what is V Taiwan? V Taiwan is an experiment that prototypes an open consultation process for digital regulatory reform. Um, so, to change a digital regulation, uh, there's a certain process we need to go for. And this process is now co created by the community of V Taiwan, which is, uh, again, nobody's a civic hackers who are not government people, and we just kind of spend our time volunteer to be there, joining hackathons, and come up with a process concretely. And it's a flexible process uh, for deliberation, from starting from a proposal of an idea that has to be committed by both the government side and the society side. And the second part is the opinions, opinion, opinion part, which we collect opinions from both online and offline. And then we reflect, and most of the time in the, in the physical room, face-to-face, um, -face, inviting all stakeholders, uh, but then we also live stream the process to the internet and then write a draft bill and send it to the parliament. Um, it has some uh, tools behind, but there's, there's no secret. It's all open source tools with some, some tools we also use, uh, which are private companies, but we uh, are open to provide the, all the tools we use right now. Um, the only secret is probably we don't really build one platform that uh, suits with the whole purpose. Um, we try to use uh, free softwares, open source tools, so that it's easier to swap any other tool that we find more useful. Okay. And the physical kind of meetup space is more or less like this photo over here, um, where people are just kind of circling around it's kind of like this stage right now, if I'm the pizza, right? <laughs> um, circling around, talk about uh, what issue they want to talk about, and if there's any chance we can modify the regulation. So the way how we did it is when, when a topic emerged, we visualized feelings through uh, web and technology. The inter interface you see over here is called Polis, and on the uh, top section, you can see other people's comments. In the second section, you can input your own comment, 
And then in the bottom section, you can see the visualization of how people actually voted. Um, we, we, sorry. Um, in this interface, you can realize there's actually no reply button on top because uh, we call this phenomenon from reply to rewrite because when people are interacting with the inter interface, you basically can look at other people's comments, but you cannot reply to it, and then there's no way, no space for the troll to grow. Um, the, the phenomenon we call from reply to rewrite is um, shown in this diagram where a more div divisive conversation in the beginning will grow after one or two months to become more consensus statement. And then we'll simply bring these statements and core rough consensus into a face-to-face -face meeting and also live stream it over the internet. Uh, which the meetings we actually bring all the stakeholders into the same room and see them around the U-shaped table. And this is a view or the perspective from a 360 camera that we live stream to the internet where we also ask the, the physical uh, facilitator to read out these comments of the chat channel from time to time so that the voice of people online can be heard as well. And to date, Vita1 has around 26 cases uh, launched on the platform and then around five law amendments and 20 regulatory reform has been made. It brings people directly into governance and helps lawmakers to decision, to implement decisions with a greater degree of legitimacy. And it helps us envision what future democracy could look like. It is a term called recursive public we borrowed from Professor Christopher Kelty that is describing this interactive environment or a community environment that keeps track of an always up to updated consensus from the society. And um, this model has been reproduced uh, in many other cities and we try to let other city fork the model as well. Um, it's been reproduced in, in Tokyo, in New York, in Toronto. Um, and I see Vita One could look like uh, a prototype that experiments how the Taiwanese government and Taiwanese society co-create policies together. But I think this experiment is more than just for Taiwan or for any government formation. It is, I think, a way to generate consensus from a large group of people from 20, 400, 400,000, a city scale, and even national scale. It is a new way how we prototype we can work together and generate rough consensus. So I think Vitawan's excellence is not only based on how many cases has been done, uh, but also based on the scalable and sustainable model of collaborative model we prototype. So to answer where we go as a society or what we want from technology, uh, I think I'll simply invite you all to join us and be nobody. So if you're willing to type this URL in your browser today, join GovZero today, uh, and let's become in my dream. Thank you.